I'm Gavin Schlissel. I'm a postdoc in the Lee Lab. Schlissel studies Sonic Hedgehog, a signaling molecule that plays a crucial role in how embryos develop. To study this protein, Schlissel recreates naturally occurring signaling patterns called morphogen gradients in a petri dish. Whitehead Institute member Poulin Lee first developed this approach as a postdoc at Caltech. One of our strategies in the lab is to recreate different moments in developmental biology and culture so that we can study them with more precision than we could otherwise use in an embryo. If you have one cell sending a signal and other cells responding to the signal, uh, the cells closest probably have the highest concentration. It turns out that that property is used over and over again in biology to get a graded response from a single initiating event. When we study something like the size of a signaling gradient, what we're really studying is what's the final shape of the tissue that's going to develop in response to a larger or smaller radius of signaling. So in each of these six wells, there's a different mutation. Each of these gradients that are, that's formed originates because there was a little bit of sonic hedgehog at the center of this gradient that uh, signaled to all of the neighboring cells. The signaling gradients could either have a, a wider radius or a smaller radius depending on uh, the exact genetics of the cells that we're studying. The thing that is novel about this approach is um, generally if you want to study the emergence of shape, you have to study something that has a shape, and that often means an animal. The huge advantage of cell culture is that you can test ideas very quickly. We can test many, many more ideas than we could ever test working in animals. Now we have perfect access to the cells. We can image them as much as we want. We can add drugs whenever we want. We can add different combinations of cell types uh, in whatever sort of configuration we want. Uh, and what that lets us do is, um, you know, for the first time, really, we can study the generation of shape without the constraints that come from working with tools that are compatible with an animal.